How's it going, everybody? This is RBT coming at you with my college football week 12 prediction slash preview video. It's going to be a pretty long video, as always. I always try not to, but it always ends up happening. We're already on week 12, man. We have like three weeks left to go, and that that sucks because uh, that's when life is exciting during college football season, and it's uh coming to an end. Three weeks left, and Hopefully we can we can cherish it for the last couple weeks. Hopefully there will be some good games, but the slate isn't actually that pretty this week. Uh, with that being the case, game day is at Stanford and USC. That shows you that shows you the uh, slate of games this week. It just seems like for some reason there's not that many good slate. Like there's not there hasn't been that one week in a long time. There's been a lot of games to watch throughout the day. Uh, it's just there's not really any exciting games this week to be honest. All right, let's go ahead. Tuesday night we have Ohio at Bowling Green. Both teams are are uh, six and three and looking pretty good. But I'm gonna go with the better quarterback with Ohio. They got blown out by Buffalo last week, but if you watch the game, the rest were were pretty bad. T Tyler Tailton's a very good dual threat quarterback. I think they go into Bowling Green and get a slim victory. I go 34-31 Ohio over Bowling Green. Next, we have two other teams from the MAC, which are very good. Buffalo at Toledo. Uh, Buffalo's undefeated in the MAC. They look, I just mentioned the rest, but they still look good. They've been scoring a lot of points. They've been playing great ever since they lost to Ohio State. And I expect them to keep on rolling. And I expect them, they, they played Louisville. And I think Louisville blew them out, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Louisville. Um, no, Baylor's freak. I said the same exact thing last week. What the heck? It was Baylor that blew them out. Wow, my bad. Somebody even commented and corrected me on that, but they lost to Baylor bad, but ever since then they've been blowing out their opponents left and right, so I think they, they continue their heart streak and, uh, and beat Toledo and win 42-32 um, to over Toledo. Next, I think we might have the game of the week on Wednesday night. It's, it's probably really going to be the most exciting game of the week, uh, completely honest. Uh, Ball State at Northern Illinois. Ball State, they're... They're on the the brink brink of, of being of being a rain. They uh, have one loss to North Texas, and if they win that game, they're they're ranked, and that would be huge for Northern Illinois, who's battling for a BCS spot, they're number fifteen right now. And as I said, that I do want to check and see what Ball State's ranked. I know they're like they're getting votes. I'm not sure if they're quite there yet. Uh, AP poll, they are. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 30, 32nd in the country. Okay, so, um, I mean, that's still a big game for Northern Illinois, who's their 15th in the BCS, are trying to bump, go past Fresno State. I mean, I think if they get in the top 12, they have to get a, a, a BCS bowl berth, and they have three weeks to do so, which, I mean, isn't, they have a conference championship game, too, so that kind of helps them out in their favor, but, uh, well, the only that is, but these are two very, very good teams. Two extremely good quarterbacks. Keith winning at Ball State and Jordan Lynch from Northern Illinois. It's going to be a really fun game to watch, and I'm definitely going to tune in this one. So, if you're unfamiliar with these two teams, watch on Wednesday night, and you'll be very impressed, and it'll be a fun game. It might, like, I'll be in dead on, completely honest. I might be, might be one of the most, um, exciting games of the week. But I do think Northern Illinois gets the win. Jordan Lynch will allow them his senior season when they're, Trying to get on the BCS Bowl berth to lose this game. Things will be very high scoring. I think it's going to be a touchdown game. But I say Northern Illinois wins 38-31 uh, to 31 of the Ball State. And a close one. And it's going to be fun. Trust me. Alright, next we have Miami, Ohio at Kent State. Kent State's been playing uh, completely. It's, it's a complete 360 of how they played a year ago. Turnovers, uh, bad quarterback play, inconsistent defense, bad defense, inconsistently bad defense. Uh, but they're playing at home against a Miami, Ohio team, which I still believe is winless on the season. They're absolutely horrible. Yep, they're winless 0-9. Uh, they're scoring 10 points a game. It's dead last in football, so no problem for Kent State in this one. I said they win this game 31-7 uh, to over, no, 31-14 to over Miami, Ohio. All right, next, a Thursday night game, we have Georgia Tech rolling into Clemson. Try to upset Clemson and knock them out of, of, a, of a, a BCS bowl berth. Pretty much, that would be the case, but... Um, Georgia Tech, I've, I've said this uh, many weeks, that they're a team that can either blow out their opponent or get blown out. It's just, it's either a good week for Georgia Tech or a bad week. But can they beat Clemson? Who knows? They, they could. 
but I don't expect Clemson to uh, lay down and lose to Georgia Tech. I think I'm not a fan of Todd's boy. I think he's severely overrated, but I still think they find a way to uh, have a huge game offensively against a not so stout Georgia Tech defense. I think they stopped Georgia Tech just enough to beat them by about two touchdowns. I'll go 38 to 24 to Clemson over Georgia Tech. But like I said, anything can happen on Thursday nights, but I don't expect a loss here for Clemson. All right, next, we have Marshall at Tulsa. And Tulsa's been kind of like a Kent State team. They've done a complete 360. They've been one of the, the top teams. Like the, They've been the powerhouse of the Conference USA Conference for the past five, six, seven years. But they, they're doing bad this season, um, unexpectedly. And uh, Marshall, on the other hand, has been very, very impressive. Rakeem Cato is a great quarterback, which I think could be snagged up late in the NFL draft. He's very consistent, um, has a high QB rating. They're 6-3 and three right now. And uh, I think they go ahead and uh, pick up another win over um, over Middle Tennessee. Wow, they're actually um, they're they're three five points five well fourteen points. Wait, no, yeah, fourteen points away from being uh, for I can't count thirteen points away from being undefeated. They lost to Ohio by three which is a good Ohio team, which I just explained. Lost to Middle Tennessee by two, and they lost to Virginia Tech, which is a good team, by eight points in triple overtime. So this is a Marshall team, which is on the was is close to being undefeated. So it's a, it's a very good Marshall team. I think they blow out Tulsa. I'll go uh, 45 to 28 Marshall over Tulsa. All right, next we have Friday night, Washington at UCLA. And... I really do think an upset here is Bruin. I think Keith Price comes out and they won a big win there in Washington. They came so close so many times, but they fell on the they fell on the short end of things a bunch of times this season. I mean, they're they're bowl eligible now. They had that that long three game losing streak where they they turned things around the last couple of weeks. They're gaining some momentum. They still have a shot to win uh, ten games this year. Uh, they win they went out and they if they win the uh, their bowl game. Which I believe would be considered a successful season for um, Washington fans. Um, I think they turn it around. I mean, this is a team that lost to Stanford by three. They competed with Oregon, uh, and then they got blown out by Arizona State. But I do think they can go into UCLA, upset them. I think Washington's still a very, very talented team. They just got into one of the toughest stretches in all of college football in a three-game stretch. Uh, and UCLA on the flip side. They did not really impress me last week whatsoever. They uh, they beat Arizona by five points, and this Arizona team, which also is, is not impressive whatsoever. Um, I really do expect Washington to come out and beat UCLA Friday night. And Keith Price has a huge game, as does Bishop Sankey. I think it's a huge mismatch uh, for Austin uh, Sapoya and Jenkins on the offensive side of the football for Washington. I think he has a big game. And I think uh, Brent Hundley has another game like the Oregon game, which he looked absolutely horrible Friday night, home stadium. I think UCLA gets beat by a field goal. The Washington 34, UCLA 31. That'll uh, knock UCLA down in the polls, probably like the 20 spot. So that's probably my upset pick of the week. All right, next we have Ohio State at Illinois. Um, Um, I think Ohio State wins this game. Illinois, though, they have they have improved this season. I'm not sure if they're well eligible or not, but they have improved. I do know their offense is looking very good. And their defense, which was horrible last season, has turned around and and uh, looked a little bit better this year. Um, and they're giving up like 40 points a game this year. They're giving up like 30, I think, this season. But they're throwing the football really well. Offensively, they look pretty good, but they still haven't been able to find that consistent play in Big Ten play. So, um. I wouldn't expect them. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised for them to put up like the high twenties against Ohio State, but their their defense does not have what it takes to be able to stop Ohio State. Uh, yes, they're playing at Illinois, but Ohio State blows them out of the water, uh, 48, 48 to 20, 25. Four, no, 48 to 24, 48 to 24. Ohio State over Illinois. Our right, next, we have Central Florida over Temple. Or at Temple, yes, picking UCF in this one uh, to be a blowout. Temple's one of the worst teams, probably the worst team. Well, there's so many bad teams in the AAC. You have South Florida, uh, Connecticut, and um, Temple. I'm not sure if Temple, Temple has a win on the season, don't they? I'm pretty sure they do. Temple is 1-8. Yes, they beat Army. That's right. Um, but 
regardless, the Central Florida blew them out of the water. Blake Morals come out and have a huge game. Uh, I did not know that Jeff Godfrey was still on the, t- on the team. He was their quarterback a couple years ago. He was actually very impressive, a dual-threat quarterback. But he, he uh, transitioned to wide receiver, and he's actually fourth on the team in catches. Good quarter, uh, running back in Storm Johnson. They have a huge game, beat Temple by freak. Maybe five touchdowns. I'll go, I'll go Central Florida, 42, Temple 10. But next, we have Iowa State at Oklahoma. Um, I would not be surprised if Iowa State gives Oklahoma a game. I mean, Iowa State came out, almost beat TCU last week, but I still expect Oklahoma. They'll find a way to win. Their defense will step up, have a big game. I'm not sure if I can really trust Blake uh, Blake Bell to have a big one, but I, regardless, I think Oklahoma finds a way to win. They won't allow themselves to lose to Iowa State. I'll go Oklahoma by, by 13. I'll go Oklahoma 31, Iowa State. Uh, well, let's go. Let's see. Oklahoma... Oklahoma 27, Iowa State 17. Next, we have Indiana at Wisconsin. Wisconsin, I think, is the most underrated team in the country, or at least top five most underrated teams in the country. They're a very solid football team. Two really good running backs play a very solid defense, a a, a, a consistent quarterback in Joel Stave. And I think if they keep winning, they could get one of those um, non-BCS bowl, non-BCS, uh, non, uh, and, uh, what are they called? Frick, um. Uh, and non-automatic bid to a BCS bowl game. I, don't know, I can't think what they're called for some reason. I'm having a brain fart, but I think they can make a BCS bowl game if they keep winning. They're talented enough to. I think they're a top 15 team in the country. They're very talented. But Indiana, they can score some points. So don't be surprised if a team like Indiana is um, if Indiana is in this game in the second half. But the run game, the uh, physical play of Wisconsin will, will take over, will, will wear out the defense of Indiana, which is not a good defense, and Wisconsin will win big in the end. I'll say, I'll say uh, 48, 48 to 31, Wisconsin over Indiana. Because I, I, I will not be surprised one bit if Indiana can score that many points. So Wisconsin over Indiana. Next we have Troy at Ole Miss. No, no question here. Uh, Troy has has battled with some teams this season. That you would not expect them to battle with. They beat or they played against uh, who was it? Um, Duke, which is a very very good Duke team. They really are. They're on the brink of being ranked. They're like 27th in the country right now. They they battle with Duke. Uh, you might not expect that to be a big statement, but it is. So they they can they can uh, battle with some BCS schools, but can they battle with Ole Miss? No. Ole Miss will come out. They'll also have a big game. The defense will stop them enough, and they'll they'll, be, they'll win big. I'll say 45 to 20. Ole Miss over Troy. Next, we have Cincinnati at Rutgers. Rutgers almost got beat by Temple last week. It was 23 to 20. I am not sold on Gary Nova as a quarterback whatsoever. Not a good team Rutgers is, and I think Cincinnati wins this game. I think Brandon K, whoever plays quarterback for Cincinnati in this one, um, comes out has a, a big game against Rutgers. I think they run the football. And uh, the defense will take over Cincinnati. They'll win by, by a field goal. I'll say uh, 31 to 28 Cincinnati over Rutgers. Next we have Purdue at Penn State. Purdue, one of the worst teams out of all the BCS conferences. Penn State will come out. They'll win. Um, I know they were beat by Minnesota last week, but that's another team that sets uh, on the brink of being ranked. And they're a very, very good story. Uh, impressive team. Uh, Minnesota is. So I was not surprised. I think I actually picked Minnesota over Penn State last week. But uh, Penn State, no no question in my mind, Purdue's just horrible defensively and offensively. They just look absolutely horrible in uh, in Big Ten play. So I'll go Penn State by 17. I'll go I'll go 34 to 17 Penn State over Purdue. Next we have West Virginia at Kansas. West Virginia really impressed me last week with how they battled with Texas. Yes, they came out on the the bad side of things, but they they still showed some fight in them, which is very impressive. And I think. They'll beat Kansas this week, definitely. It depends if they play last. They might. They're four and six right now. They might make a bowl game. They play Iowa State, so they they've gone through the mid their schedule already. So if they win their their last game because uh, these last two games they can make a bowl game, which I think West Virginia fans will take. I know I would if I was West Virginia fans. So they they beat Kansas, no problem. Kansas, their 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 abs their their programs just in one of the worst the worst phases in in a long long time. Even pre Charlie, I'm uh, Charlie Weiss, well, pre uh, Mark Mangino, um, I just don't understand the mentality. They're trying to play physical football with the players at Kansas. Get there's no way, no way that's gonna that's gonna work. They have seems like Kansas, Kansas, they have to be gimmicky. They have to run a spread. They have to 
to throw the football 40 times a game, have at least throw it 30 times a game. Do something different. You can't run big boy football at Kansas with the players they get and expect to compete. And Charlie Weiss, I think it was not the guy. Kansas's worst day of the worst the worst day in their program in the past decades that they did fired Mark Mancino. They'll get blown out once again, and with was West Virginia will win by like straight by 30. Um, I'll, I'll go. I'll go 41, no, 42 to 14, West Virginia over Kansas. Next, we have Central Michigan at Western Michigan. Western Michigan still won us on the season, lost to Eastern Michigan last week, who has been one of the worst FBS programs the past decade. Absolutely horrible, and they lost to them in overtime after their head coach was fired. On that alone, Central Michigan by two touchdowns, 28 14 over Western Michigan. Kentucky at Vanderbilt. Vandy came out last week, looked big, had a big win against Florida. Um, I expected it, I predicted it, and I predicted them to be Kentucky this week. They'll come out, have another big offensive game. Kentucky's getting better, but they're not where they need to be just yet. Vanderbilt by 17, I'll go 37 20 over Kentucky. Next, we have North Carolina State at Boston College. North Carolina State, I mentioned Duke earlier, was beaten by Duke by a large margin last week, and they have not been impressive, really. Their quarterback situation is. Completely out of whack. They don't know who they want to play. They have a bunch of transfers. They can't find an identity on offense. So I think Boston College was one of the most underrated quarter, uh, running backs and quarterbacks in the country, really. Chase Reddick's really came on. I mean, he's been, I mean, you can say he's been inconsistent, but he still hasn't. Uh, he, he's been better than what they've had pre him after the, the Matt Ryan era. Um, and Andre Williams, one of the most underrated running backs in the country. Very, very good running back. And he takes over, has a big game. Chase Reddick manages the game. And, uh, there's just enough to win this game over North Carolina. I said they went by a touchdown, 35 to 28 over North Carolina State. Next, we have North Carolina at Pitt. Pitt needs one more win to become bowl eligible, and I think they get it this week. I think uh, their the physical brain of football will uh, matches up well against North uh, Carolina's uh, spread type attack they run under under Larry Fedora. Yes, North Carolina's been on a roll the last three games. They're fighting to be bowl eligible. They have to win the last three, or uh, two out of the last three to become bowl eligible, but I don't think they can beat Pitt. I think Pitt comes out, has a, a, a good game offensively and defensively. I think, I really don't know what happened to North Carolina. They were, I think they had the talent to be able to win the ACC, but they uh, completely flopped. But I think playing at home, Pittsburgh gets the win. Um... Isaac Bennett will have a big game. They'll gash that defense in North Carolina, which has been the the uh, bad spot on their team. Like I said, I think the physical style of play Pittsburgh runs defensively matches up well with North Carolina's offense. Um, if there's any matchup that's good for North Carolina, that's their tight end, Eric Ebron. I mean, don't be surprised. Uh, Vern Rayner is a good quarterback, so if they stay in the game, it's going to be because of him and Eric Ebron. But uh, aside from that, Pittsburgh by 10. I'll go 34-24. Pit over North Carolina. Next, we have Maryland at Virginia Tech. Um, man, you, you can never predict Virginia Tech. I mean, they, they have to win out to be able to, uh, to have a shot to win the ACC. That they, they'll need some help from from Clemson to beat Georgia Tech this week, which I think will happen. But um, I don't know. I think I think Virginia Tech can can go out and win the rest of the games. I mean, they have Maryland and Virginia. Maryland's been looking very bad lately. Don't know what happened to them. They they would look good to start the season. Now they look really bad. But you can never predict Virginia Tech. They come out one league, week and look completely flat. They play to their, the level of their opponents, really. That's what, that's what they do. I mean, it's a Virginia Tech team that lost to Duke, which is not bad, but still, Virginia Tech, Duke, who do you think would win that one? But that was a shocker, but anyways, came out last week. They had a big game against Miami. I think I predicted that one and uh, got that one right. I expected them to have a big game, but I didn't expect Logan Thomas to play as well as he did. So can he continue like that? And play well against Maryland. I don't know because he's really inconsistent. But I expect him to do enough to be able to beat Maryland. They're bad. Virginia Tech by by ten points. I'll go twenty four to fourteen over Maryland. Next, Florida Atlantic at Southern Miss. Florida Atlantic, Southern Miss. I can't pick them until they win a game. Florida Atlantic by ten. Um, twenty. No, let's go thirty to twenty. Florida Atlantic over Southern Miss. Akron at UMass. Akron's on the rise. Massachusetts still. Hanging there, still one of the worst teams in the MAC. So I expect Akron to come out and get a win, and I think this will be the third one of the season if they if they do win, which is will totally the last. No, this will be their fourth win. Um, Akron had won prior to the season three games in the last three years. That'll 
quadruple their their win total from a year ago. So big win from Akron. I think they win by by uh, two touchdowns, 31 to 17 over UMass. Campbell at Old Dominion. Old Dominion came out expected. I expected what I saw from them last week. They scored a ton of points against Idaho. Tyler Haneke had a huge game, so I expect him to do the same against Campbell. Campbell, however you pronounce it. Uh, expect them to score in the 50s once again. I'll go 50, 58, 59, 59 to uh, 27 over Campbell. Washington State at Arizona. Um, I I think what Washington State could win this one. I think Arizona's down after a loss against a tough loss against uh, UCLA. I did not expect that, and I really don't understand why UCLA jumped so far in the polls after beating Arizona because they were not nearly as good as I thought they were going to be. But Washington State, I expect they can win this one. I expect they come out. Um, and uh, their type of offense, I think, matches up well with Arizona's small, undersized three-three-five scheme. I expect them to have a, a big game offensively. I, I would not be surprised if Arizona. This is a shootout. Um, Kadeem carrying the offense. They can score some points though. So um, watch out. High scoring game will be a fun game to watch if you get the Pac-12 Network. So I'm gonna go Washington State in a shootout. Um, 48 to 45 over Arizona. It'll be a fun one. But whatever team comes out, whatever quarterback plays better, because B.J. Dinker has been inconsistent. But if he, he plays a good game, he can keep Arizona in the game. But um, it would not surprise me for each either one of the teams to win. But I'm gonna go Washington State, 48 to 45. I trust Mike Leach more than I trust Rich Rodriguez. UAB at East Carolina. UAB putting a bunch putting up a bunch of points lately, looking very well. Not East Carolina looking very good lately, putting up a lot of points. Shane Carden's a very good quarterback. Good offense there at East Carolina, so I expect them to beat UAB, who's been the uh, bottom dweller of this USA for the past decade. East Carolina by three touchdowns, uh, at least. I'll go 45 to 24. East Carolina over UAB. Louisiana Lafayette at Georgia State. Georgia State is another one of those teams that are uh, winless, I believe, is by far the worst FBS team. Um, completely, it's, it's just horrible. Absolutely horrible. Georgia State is Louisiana Lafayette, the worst team in the Sun, uh, the best team in the Sun Belt. Over the worst team in the Sun Belt, which is um, Georgia State. So losing Lafayette, I expect to win very big, very, very, very big. Um, let's say, uh, let's say losing Lafayette, 42, Georgia State 10. Idaho State to BYU. Enough said there. Idaho State, so Idaho State, FCS team, BYU, very impressive. Uh, AQ team. So B BYU, Taysom Hill goes off. Uh, 42 to 7. 42 to 42. I'm going to go. I'm going to pick a shutout in this one. I'm going to say 42 to nothing. BYU over Idaho State. I don't I don't know how good Idaho State is in the FCS. Let me check. Um, they're 3 and 7. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll go I'll go 42 to nothing. I never pick shutouts because that's like impossible to pick. But I'm, I'm going to do it. 42 to nothing. BYU over Idaho State. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Connecticut at Southern Southern Methodist. Connecticut at SMU. Uh, Connecticut still win this on the season. They are bad, very bad, and it's really a toss up. You'll get to see in two weeks who the worst team is out of them and Temple. I think Temple's worse because both teams are winless right now in the uh, AAC, but they play each other in two weeks. But um, SMU, they'll score enough points. They'll beat Connecticut, no problem. Connecticut's defense is horrible. Their offense is horrible. Don't know how. Lyle McCombs is a great running back, but not enough. Not enough. SMU wins big. 45 to 17 over Connecticut. Syracuse at Florida State. Uh, as much as I want Florida State to lose, because I, I like I, I like Florida State's program, I like their tradition. Like Jameis Winston's a heck of a quarterback, but oh my God, their fans um, that I've, I've seen post on these message boards are obnoxious, and I'd love more than anything to see them lose. Man, it's it's bad. They're, I I do think they're, they're bet, the second. Well, you can't really pick who's better, Alabama or Florida State. So I think it's really a tie between them. But I don't, no disagreement there. But just because they're obnoxious fans that I've seen, I, I'm sure there's there's great Florida State fans, but the obnoxious ones that I've seen on on this message board that I always go on, it's I'd love for them to lose. But no way, no way, to lose Syracuse. Syracuse, the team lost to Georgia Tech, 56 to nothing a couple weeks ago. That's unacceptable. They did, they did come out last week to beat Maryland. No, that surprised me. Held Maryland at three points. 
three points. That was a shocker. La well, you, uh, look at this. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. Um, they in the last two games they they gave up a combined what well, average of one point five points a game. Game before that they gave up fifty six to Georgia Tech and was shut out. So um, obviously Syracuse's offense has is not what it was a year ago under Ryan Nassib. But um, no way, no way, Florida State. I don't know why I'm playing with this. Florida State, no problem, no win, huge. Um, at least I'll go 48-13. 48 to 48 to 14. Florida State over Syracuse. Next we have Georgia at Auburn, and one of the one of the two games between ranked teams this week, which is. It's sad, man. Why are there no good matchups? That's sad. But uh, I think I think Auburn wins. Georgia's just too decimated. I would not be surprised though. I think this game really is going to determine and show how how uh, how well Alabama will play against Auburn. Todd Gurley has a big game. I expect Alabama to have a big game running the football against Auburn. We'll be able to see how the, uh, the, uh, the combination of a home field advantage and a run game will be able to do against Auburn. But uh, I expect Auburn to win. I expect them to win by, by two touchdowns at least. Um, Georgia's is too decimated. The, the defense is too bad. Air Murray alone, he's a great quarterback. He'll be able to keep him in the game, but not enough. Um, a high-scoring game, though, really high-scoring, but I'll go Auburn. Auburn 40, uh, Auburn 45-34. to 34. I'll go by 11. Auburn 35-34 over Georgia. Next, we have Oklahoma State at Texas. Texas has has been on a roll. They've won what six straight Big Twelve games or six and zero tied for first with Baylor right now. And it's the Oklahoma State team that's been been uh, doing doing pretty good lately. I mean they they jumped up number twelve in the polls. They have one loss in the season, and that was to who? That was to Baylor. To, no, no, they play Baylor two weeks. That was to who? They lose to? That's the West Virginia. That was a shocker. If Oklahoma State wins that game against West Virginia, which was a shocker. Um, next week's matchup could be like number four versus number five with Baylor and Oklahoma State. That would that would be weird, but I think I think Texas can win this game. I really do. I think um they they're showing some fight. The new defensive coordinator they're showing fight. They 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 like Matt Brown as a head coach. They want him to stay there. They they want to rally behind their head coach after all the talk about him getting fired or resigning or whatever. I think they go on. They win this game. I think uh, Case McCoy has a big game. I think they run the football, even though um, it came out today that their one of their linebackers, I believe, and their running back is out for the season. So that's going to be big. But I do expect them, whoever they line up at running back, to have a big game because I'm not really sold on the Oklahoma State defense. But I, I expect this to be a shootout. I do. Oklahoma State has a very, very impressive offense. To whoever plays quarterback, very impressive for them. They have uh, it's, it's normally is it Clint Shelf that's been taking the the, the lowest snaps for Oklahoma State. Um, J.W. Walsh, which is really a combination, like I said, it's J.W. Walsh and Clint Shelf. They, they're both impressive over plays. Very good running back in Roland. And uh, it's going to be a shootout. It really is, but I just, why, how can you pick against Texas with how well they've been playing? So I'm going to go Texas. Um, and a close one. A close shootout, much like last week. I go 48-45 to 45, Texas over uh, Oklahoma State. Next, we have Michigan State at Nebraska. Michigan State's been another one of those teams that's been looking very, very impressive. I expect them to beat Nebraska, who uh, beat Michigan last week. But, I mean, when you play in Nebraska, anything can happen because it's one of the best home field advantages in the country. But Michigan State's been looking really good. Defense is one of the best in the country. I'm interested to see what they're actually ranked uh, points per game wise. It's probably like top, it's probably seven or something. Uh, third, wow, third in the country in points, points per game. Most points they've given up is to Indiana. Like I said, Indiana has a very good offense, but only given up 11 points per game. And with uh, Taylor Martinez probably still out, I'm not sure what the ruling on that has been. Taylor Martinez has been decimated by injuries this year. Uh, I expect Michigan State to run the football, uh, Connor Cook to, to uh, manage the game. If he doesn't make mistakes, I think Michigan State can take, it, take control and win the game. This is going to be one of those low-scoring games, I believe. Because that's what Michigan State does. They're the typical Big Ten team. Punch you in the mouth. I expect them to win by, by 10 points. I'll go. Uh, no, let's go a touchdown game. 
I'll spot Nebraska 17. I'll go 24 to 17 Michigan State over Nebraska. All right, here we go, guys. Another upset pick right here. Um, Miami at Duke. Miami's just been through too much. Two straight emotional losses. Duke is fighting for a 10-win regular season. And if they do that, if Duke wins out, if they win this game and win out, I believe, if they if they win this game and win out, and Clemson beats Georgia Tech on Thursday night, Duke will win the AAC, the ACC Coastal or Atlantic, whichever the two conferences. I can never remember what conferences, what division they're in. But if they win out, in Clemson, I mean, Clemson beats Georgia Tech, they win the, that division, and they will play Florida State, which I will be rooting for Duke every day of the week. How awesome would it be to see Duke in a BCS Bowl? I don't care. I'd love it. I would absolutely love it. And it's very manageable. They can, they, I think they can beat Miami. I think they can beat Wake Forest, and they can beat North Carolina. I mean, this is a team that, that is close to only having one loss. They were beat down pretty bad by Georgia Tech. But then they, they had an sh absolute shootout. <laughs> Against um against uh, George, uh Pitt and they lost to Pitt 58 to 55. I mean that's a that's pretty that's a pretty good accomplishment scoring 55 points on a Pitt defense which is not bad whatsoever. But um I don't know. I expect uh I expect Duke to win this one. Uh, they just been um Duke's defense has been playing really tough. I expect um. Miami to come out, turn the ball over like they did last week. They can't. Their offense is pretty much in disarray ever since um in disarray ever since uh, Duke Johnson was, was uh, hurt and he's out for the rest of the season. The playing at home, I'm sure that this will be a field stadium with the implications on this game that that that's set forth. Expecting the win, I expect Duke to have a big game. Expect him to be Miami an upset win. Uh, I think they can score 30 something points. I'll go 38 to 31. Duke over Miami. And Frick, how, you don't know how much I want Duke to, uh, to play for the playing of BCS. Well, that'd be awesome. All right, next we have Michigan at Northwestern. Northwestern, man, they, ever since I lost to Ohio State, they've completely fallen off the map. This is a Northwestern team that got up to, like, what, 14 in the country? And they've lost every single Big Ten game since then. They're 0-5 right now in the Big Ten. And uh, Michigan's another team that's been really struggling. I think some Michigan fans are actually calling for Brady Hope to be fired. I think it's a little bit too far after um, just a couple seasons at the helm. But uh, I, I think I think Michigan will win this one. I think Northwestern's just been through too much. I mean, five straight losses. That's that's pretty that's pretty bad. But I expect Devin Gardner. He's been struggling lately. I expect him to come out and have a big game. They, they should start stop Northwestern's offense for the most part, and I expect Michigan to win by by at least I'll say ten points. I go thirty to thirty to twenty one, uh, Michigan over Northwestern. Next we have TCU at Kansas State. Kansas State's been actually looking very impressive. They've got the bone rolling lately. They blew out Texas Tech last week. TCU has been probably the maybe the most disappointing maybe tied with Oklahoma as the most disappointing team in the Big Twelve. Kansas State's been rolling. They've um, been looking very good. Uh, Daniel Sams, Jake Waters, are replaced quarterback, has been impressive. Uh, John Hubert's been looking very good also. The defense has been coming up big. They stopped Texas Tech for the most part uh, Saturday. And I think they can beat TCU. TCU's been very disappointing. They barely beat Iowa State last week, and I expect Kansas State to come out and have a pretty big win, quite similar to the Texas Tech game. I'll go Kansas State. Um, Kansas State. 30, 35 to 20 over TCU. All right, next we have my South Alabama Jaguars over, I mean, against the Navy midshipmen. That's going to be awesome. We finally get to play on actual TV. Uh, the only other game we've had televised aside from ESPN3 has been the Tennessee game, which we almost won. But this is the Navy team that lost to Western Kentucky. And yeah, out. South Alabama beat Western Kentucky, but man, so disappointing. We have lost five games by a combined 13 points, I think. We've lost three games by one point. All Every game we've lost this season, or three and five, has been decided on the last drive. Even our wins, except uh, two of our wins have been decided on the last drive. Uh, we had to 
come up with a stop. Like one win we had big was against Kent State. Um, uh, the games against who was it? Uh, we lost to Arkansas State by one point. We lost to Troy by one point. We lost to Southern Utah by one point. Yes, yeah, Southern Utah. And we lost to um, who was it by one point? We lost to somebody by two points. We lost to somebody by two points. Last um, was it Arkansas State. We lost by two points. I can't remember. Wow. I clicked I clicked on South Alabama and it brought me to Alabama's page. Don't get too ahead of yourself, ESPN. South Alabama, not Alabama. There we go. Um, okay, we lost to Texas State by two points. That wasn't the last drive. They had to convert a fourth and twenty-four to um to to kick a field goal to win the game. That was pathetic. We lost to Tennessee. We were seven yards away from tying Tennessee at the end of the game. And we didn't convert. We threw a pick in the end zone, and that was like 30 seconds left or something, or a minute left. And we lost to Texas State on the last drive. We lost to Arkansas State on the last drive. And that's disappointing. I mean, if we we're we're so, I mean, with five losses, it's crazy to think, but it's completely the truth that we are we very easily could be undefeated. On the other hand, we could very easily be one and seven right now. Uh, but that's that's how the season's been, and we've been on the short end of a lot of things. I really hope we have to win one of our last. Uh, we have to win four out of our three out of our last four games to make a bowl game. And uh, if we do get the six wins, though, it's already been announced and or the rumor that the GoDaddy.com bowl will take South Alabama, which would be awesome because that's the home stadium that they already play in. Which would be kind of weird, but I would still take a bowl game in the first year bowl eligibility and day of the week, no matter where it is. But can we beat Navy? I'm not sure. This is an Navy team that's been clicking on all cylinders lately. They've been looking very, very impressive. Our last game we played against a triple option team was against Cal Poly about two or three years ago, and we were beat like 56 to 10. It was bad. So uh, I would love for us to win, but. I gotta, I gotta stay with the con continued trend. I expect us to fight. We haven't, we will not get blown out because we, we've, we've not laid down all season. A very impressive Navy team. It's, it's weird going up to play Navy. They won't be accustomed to the weather. It'll probably be freezing cold. And it's just we're, we're down here in South Alabama where it's humid, hot every day. It'll be different for our players, and I expect us to lose by a point. That's just how it's been. And we won't lose. But we'll, I mean, we won't lose by a lot, but we'll lose by a point. Uh, I'll go. Uh, 35 to 34, Navy over South Alabama. That's just how the season's been going. I right, have Utah at Oregon. All right, uh, can Utah beat Oregon? No, but I think they make it very, very close. With the combination of Oregon coming off their first loss, an emotional loss, which I put a lot of emphasis on, uh, and a Utah team which comes out in place based on uh, they play as well as their competition. They all, they beat Stanford, which beat Oregon. They almost beat UCLA on the same. They came down to the last drive for Utah, and they almost beat UCLA. But the quarterback threw their quarterback threw six picks in that game. They still had the opportunity to win. And I expect them to come out play very very tough against Oregon. They have a a, a defense which is inconsistently good and an offense that is inconsistently good. So if they can click in all cylinders. They can give Oregon a fight to the fourth quarter. I expect it to be a lot closer than some people think, but I'll go Oregon eventually by 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 two touchdowns. Go Oregon 48, Utah 34. And that's yeah, probably closer than some people think, but do not be surprised if this game is like 31 to 31 going into the, the end of the third quarter and into the beginning of the fourth quarter. But expect Oregon, they always do somehow to come away at the end. They about came away and uh, <laughs> got a win out of their butt against Stanford last uh, Thursday. That was a crazy game. But, okay, we have... How long has this been going on for? Like, 40 minutes, I guess. 39. I was whoa, I was close on that one, man. All right, California at Colorado. Colorado, man, they have been... Uh, What do they have? Three wins in the season this year, and that's I that's kind of impressive. Yeah, three wins. They're three and six, winless in the Pac-12. And that's uh actually pretty good considering... How how um how bad they've done in years past. I mean, both teams, Cal and Colorado, have uh, no wins in the Pac-12 combined four wins in this game. But I expect Colorado to win their this game. 
uh, if Colorado can somehow find a way to win out, which won't happen, uh, they have to beat they'll have to beat Cal, USC, and Utah, which will not happen. Um, they can make a bowl game for the first time in forever. I think it'll be the first time they, they would make a bowl game since they joined the Pac-12, actually. But it won't happen. But I think they beat Cal. Cal can throw the football around. They have a really good offense. Their defense is absolutely horrible, man. And I expect Colorado to take advantage of that, win at home, and somehow keep their bowl berth, um, their bowl berth, their bowl aspirations, uh, alive. So I'll go Colorado in a high scoring game, 45 to 42 over California. It'll be close, but not close enough. Texas Tech versus Baylor. Baylor's on a, uh, on a roll, on a roll, and they are on a quest to win a national championship and to play for a national championship. Can they do it? I don't know. They have to get some other help. They have to get Florida State. Um, Florida State will have to lose to one of either Syracuse, Idaho, Florida, or potentially Duke or uh, Florida State, Duke or um, who is it? Duke or Virginia Tech, which I don't think will happen. And they'll probably have to get Ohio State to lose also, and they'll probably have to get. Uh, they'll, they'll, I think Baylor will end up jumping Stanford. They were, they were close to jumping Stanford this week. They jumped them in the AP poll, but um, I think they'll end up jumping Stanford because I mean they're undefeated. Stanford has a loss, but Texas Tech is a team that was that was uh, taking advantage of some uh, of an easy schedule really. But I mean you can't blame them for winning. I mean if you win, you should be ranked, and that's just how it is. Uh, but they they got beaten down pretty bad the last couple of weeks. They finally have uh, tasted tasted adversity, and this will be a, a week to really show if they can come back from it. And it's it's a bad week to do so because they're facing one of the best teams in the country in Baylor. But I expect them to fight. I expect them to give Baylor a game. But Baylor's offense will eventually come out route Texas Tech, and it's not a bad Texas Tech team, but it's just uh they just. It's so much change they they underwent over the off season. Um, new players, new faces, uh, defense, which has been playing bad lately, and that really does not go well for them because they're playing one of the best, the best offense in the country in Baylor. So I, I think Baylor wins uh, pretty big. I expect them to fight though. I expect uh, Cliff Kingsbury squad to to fight for the first half or so, but Baylor will pull out and win by a ton. Uh, I will go. I'll go 56 to 35. Baylor over Texas Tech. Next, we have Florida at South Carolina, and I will be extremely shocked if Florida uh, wins this game. I really expect South Carolina to put it down on Florida. Florida's been absolutely horrible lately, and they probably won't make a bowl game. They have one winnable game left on their schedule, and that is against an FCS squad. Which is who is it against? I know it's against an FCS team, but yeah, South Carolina, an FCS team, and a a uh, Florida, they have Florida State. Georgia Southern, that's who it is. Frick, they could lose to Georgia Southern. And if they don't make a ball game, I would not be surprised. Or I, would, I would expect Will Mustang to be fired. Um, but South Carolina's been playing some good football. They're back up there. If they can keep winning out, they could possibly make a BCS bowl. But they'd have to get some help. If Auburn if Auburn loses to Georgia and they lose to Alabama and um, South Carolina keeps winning and somehow gets ranked ahead of probably Missouri, well, Missouri has to. If Missouri, I think it's South Carolina. Um, I mean, Missouri play Texas A&M. If Missouri loses to Texas A&M, it loses in the uh, the SEC championship game. And if Auburn loses to Georgia and Alabama, I would expect South Carolina to uh, make a BCS bowl. But they'd have to beat Clemson. They'd have to beat Clemson, which is is kind of debatable right now. But I expect them to beat Florida. No problem. Florida's defense has been playing bad, and that was Florida's pretty much just quit. They they they've, they've quit as a team. Look horrible against Vanderbilt. I expect them to do the same plan in South Carolina. So South Carolina, big, um, thirty-five to to thirty-five to seventeen over Florida in a big win. Houston at Louisville. Um, Houston is a team that really has not got the recognition that they they deserve. They are a very good football team. I think they 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 are a top twenty-five football team. They have two losses, one. Against BYU, which is a, a good team by one point, and then they lost last week to Central Florida, who's probably going to win the AAC, and they lost on the last drive. And um, they're another team that's really close to being undefeated, and I expect them to give Louisville all they can imagine. I expect them to give Louisville a game. I expect this game to come down to the wire, much like the game did last week against Central Florida. But I have full faith in Teddy Bridgewater. I still believe he is the obviously going to be the number one pick in the draft. If well, 
the Jags won today against my Titans, so they might get like they might not get the first pick. But I expect him to be the first quarterback pick in the draft. But uh, I have faith in him. I have faith in Charlie Strong. I expect him to come out uh, on top late in the game, 34 to 31 over Houston. Next we have Memphis at South Florida. Both teams are horrible. <laughs> Um, I forgot to mention Memphis when I was talking about the worst teams in the AAC. You have Memphis, South Florida, Temple, and Connecticut, all horrible. But both teams, I think, are equally as bad. And I'm going to have to go with South Florida with the home field advantage. I have a friend that plays for South Florida, so I'm going to give the win to uh, South Florida. They have two conference wins, and Memphis is under, uh, winless in the conference. So I'm going to go South Florida by a field goal, 24-21. Next, we have Colorado State at New Mexico. Um, I expect Colorado State to win. They uh, they were beat down pretty bad last week. I might might say, uh, or the week before that. Sorry, we, I forgot they played Nevada last week. The week before that, they were beat down pretty bad by Boise. I expected them to maybe shot the country that week, but they didn't. But um, this is a Colorado State team that plays. They're like a uh, miniature version of Alabama. Jim McElwain's really, really done a good, great job of implementing the the strategies and everything that he learned from Nick Saban. And he's doing quite the exact same thing there at, at Colorado State. They're playing tough defense. They're playing smash-mouth football. They have a game manager at quarterback that makes really good decisions, doesn't make mistakes. Garrett Grayson, a very good quarterback. Um, saw him play against Alabama, and he, was, he actually really, really impressed me. I mean, he... Uh, he he limits his mistakes and he gives his team a chance to win and that's all that matters. So I expect them to come out and beat New Mexico pretty handily. Um, I'll go 35 to 20 over New Mexico. Louisiana Tech at Rice, a team that is very not impressive <laughs> in in Louisiana Tech and a Rice team that can score some points. I think Rice no problem in this game. They score a lot of points. They really should. I'll go Rice, 42-24 to 24 for losing attack. Next, we have Texas State at Arkansas State. I think Arkansas State has a better team. Uh, Texas State likes to run the football a lot. And um, I think Arkansas State matches up probably out of all the Sun Belt teams. I think they might match up the best against Texas State. And I, I think there's too much offensive talent for Arkansas State to lose this one. I expect Arkansas State to win 34-28 to 28 over Texas State. All right, Alabama at Mississippi State. Um, I'm kind of actually worried about this game because you got to remember last year Alabama had a, a, a big one against LSU in the following week. They lost to Texas A&M. Uh, it's Mississippi State, Texas A&M, no. But they did score 41 points against Texas A&M last week. So this is a, a dangerous, quietly dangerous team in Mississippi State, which can give teams problems. And, I mean, coming off a big win, I expect this to be kind of, kind of coming out flat. If we don't come out flat, I'll be very impressed and very, very happy. But I do expect them to come out flat. So Mississippi State, I expect them to be around the first quarter and a half maybe. But eventually, Alabama think Alabama will get things together. I mean, playing at Mississippi State is no easy task. I mean, they're no walk in the park about whatsoever. But uh, eventually in the second half, Alabama will take over. They'll run the football, do much of what they did against LSU. They made great second half, to jump, uh, second half adjustments last week. So I expect them to win big over Mississippi State. I'll go Alabama. Alabama 45 to to uh, I'll give I'll give Mississippi State 21 points. Go 45 21 Alabama over Mississippi State. I expect Mississippi State to have some success against Alabama, and in the first half. But would not be surprised if Alabama uh, held, holds Mississippi State scoreless in the second half. All right, best game of the week, according to College Game Day, you have Stanford at USC. But you do have to give USC some credit because they have been playing like a top 15 team in the country ever since Lane Kiffin was fired. Um, I think, are they undefeated since since uh, Lane Kiffin was fired? I think so. I, actually, I think they were. Um, I could be wrong, but... They've been playing, the last three weeks, they've been playing very good football. They beat, they absolutely blew out Cal, they blew out Oregon State, and they blew out a good Utah team. They've been playing good offense when they had to, and they play, they have played good defense when they've had to. Their defense, I thought, was one of the best teams in the country until they played, uh, they got to the stretch of Arizona State and Arizona. 
they they finally got back into form and they've been playing the defense like I've expected them to. I think they're easily a top ten defense in the country. And they live and die by their offense. Uh, they're playing at home, so it's going to be packed out uh, home field advantage for for USC. And I would not be surprised to see USC with the way they've been playing stay in this game for the most game most part of the game. But I think Stanford does more of what they did last week against Oregon or trying to do, which they didn't really expect to come out and, and blow them out like they did in the first three quarters. But I expect them to do what they are intending to do and just keep running the football, get the, the consistent three, four, five-yard gains, wear them out in the fourth quarter, uh, take advantage of that, and, and uh, pull away in the fourth quarter. So I go Stanford probably less than what people think. I go Stanford 34-24 to 24 over USC, a 10-point game. Because USC really has impressed me, though, with how they've been playing lately. All right, next we have Florida International at UTEP. Two teams which have been uh, probably the two worst teams, aside from Southern Miss, in this USA conference. I think UTEP, they both teams have one win, I think. Yep. No, whoa, yes. Florida at Florida International is 1-8, and, and UTEP, I believe, is 1-8 and eight also. So in this case, I believe you have to go... Um, Yes, you have to go with um, the home team, UTEP. And Florida National, I think, got a, a win that shouldn't count because they beat Southern Miss, and Southern Miss hasn't beat a team in the last two years. So uh, a t I'll pick the team that has not that has a win that's not over Southern Miss. So I'll go, I'll go UTEP. Um, UTEP 38-24 to over Florida, Florida International. And UTEP can run the football. I watched a little bit of their game against Texas A&M, and they, they run the football pretty good early on. All right, next we have Oregon State at Arizona State. I expect Oregon State to come out and win. They've struggled as of late. Their offense was looking like one of the best offenses in the country throughout the first half of the season, and they've kind of told off late. But I still, I think Sean Manning is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country, and I expect them to come out and, and um, upset Arizona State in Arizona State's home stadium. With that said, Arizona State really is impressive. They they do look good. This is a team that that uh, is. I guess inconsistent to a point. They weren't expected to lose to Notre Dame. They uh, the defense isn't that great, but their offense is, is really impressive though. Um, they they pulled a win at last week out of their butt against Utah, and like I said, Utah, Utah plays their opponent. That's why I expect them to be um, to, uh, to compete with to compete with uh, with uh, Oregon this week. But I expect Oregon State to hand them a loss and. Uh, so this will be a high scoring game, definitely. I'll go Oregon State um, 40, 47 to 42 over Utah. Er, Oregon State 47, Arizona State 42. Alright, some pretty easy games in the slate. Wyoming at Boise State. Wyoming's kind of disappointed me lately, man. They, uh, they have a really good quarterback in Brett Smith, and they've not really utilized his abilities to their potential. Um, they were actually out to a lead yesterday against Fresno State and was absolutely blown out at the end of the game. That shocked me. That really did shock me. But um, I expect Brett Smith to have a big game actually uh, with Wyoming, which is a really good offense. Really, they uh, can score. So they can score some points, averaging four, uh, 34 points a game. But I think Boise State playing in the blue field. They don't normally lose in the blue field. Kind of a, an exception this year. They've had a really down year for, for Boise State, but. They'll find a way to win. I have faith in Boise. They'll, Chris Peterson, one of the best head coaches in football, they'll find a way to win. I'll go Boise State 34, Boise State 42, Wyoming 32 in this one. San Diego State at Hawaii. Hawaii, one of the worst teams in football. San Diego State, which is which is kind of uh, came on lately. They look like one of the worst teams in football early on. They've, they've looked a little bit better. They've won... Um, Five out of the last six, which is kind of kind of odd because their first game, I remember they lost to Eastern Illinois 40 to 19. That was a shocker. Um, I did not expect that to happen because I thought San Diego State could have, could battle for the Mountain West potentially this season, but they'll beat Hawaii. Hawaii's not been the same. I don't know if they'll ever be the same. I mean, heck, they changed their name to the Rainbow Warriors. Or their their uh <laughs> their uniforms suck now. They have one of the best uniforms in football. And I love their uniforms in the cold print. And just because I hate their uniforms, I'll pick San Diego State. And the fact that Hawaii hasn't won a game this year. <laughs> so I'll go San Diego State. Um, 
42 to 28 over Hawaii. And next we have San Jose State at Nevada. I think Nevada has been the team in the Mountain West to underachieve the most. And I expect David Fowles to have a big game. I've, I've probably um, talked about him in every single video that I picked a San, Diego, a San Jose State game, but much deservingly because he's a very impressive quarterback. And I think he'll definitely be picked in the first couple rounds of the NFL draft. Uh, <clears throat> but I just mentioned San, San Diego State. I did not know this, so I just checked. But uh, they actually beat San Jose State last week. It took a 22-point comeback in the fourth quarter, but they did that. But I mentioned David Fowles. He's thir uh, San Jose State's 13th in the country, uh, passing the football per game, 325 yards a game. So, I mean, you got to admit that's kind of impressive. And Nevada's been really, really underperforming the 3-7 and seven this season. I expect uh, San, San Jose State to come out and uh, put a lot of points on the board. And they win something like 42-30 to 30 over Nevada. All right, guys, that has been it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please Please leave a like if you did. If you disagree with any of my picks, let me know in the comment section below. Have a great day. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and leave a like if you haven't already. Uh, roll Tide, Go Sox, and Go Titans to you. Um, until next time, have a great week. Uh, peace.